work weekend or same day. And then based on my original data, uh, which is at the top, I was able to add some more information for each data point. So I was able to add the distance from home at that time, uh, the name of the cluster that I had uh, identified, and then where I actually was at that time. And then I could create a model of me. Um, I could figure out what dates I was away from home in my history. I could figure out what my local travel radius was. And also my likelihood of being at a certain significant location by day and time. And of course, also the significant locations in my life. And finally, uh, I, I can present my findings. And this usually depends on what you want to do with your data. Um, right now, I'm presenting my findings. But you can also take your data structures and write a queryable interface to, to it. Um, so what I did was I wrote a Google Home app that I could use to ask about my past history and my past locations. So I'm going to see if this works. Um, so this is based on very old data, uh, just so you know. So it doesn't actually recognize like that I was at work. It just recognizes whether I was home or not at home. So if, for example, I decide to ask it, where was I on July 13th, 2017? Oh, where's the sound? Well, OK. So hopefully you can see the response. So it basically said you were at home until 6.35 AM, away from between 6.36 AM and 4 PM, and then home for the rest of the day. Um, and then I can ask it things like, predict where I will be on Saturday at 5.30 PM. And it says, there is an 87% chance that you will be home at that time. So kind of a homebody. Um, <laughs> uh, you can ask it, will I be home on Sunday at you know, 8, oops, 8.23 PM? And they'll say, there's a 68% chance that you will be home at that time. So you know, th there's some interesting things you can do to query your data. Um, See. So these are the types of questions that I could ask the demo that I just showed you. But there are um, expanded questions that I could ask if I had put more work into the code for the demo. So there are questions like, how many days was I out of town in July? Um, when was I at work on a weekend? Uh, how many times did I visit the grocery store last month? How long does it usually take to drive to work? And when was I last at the Grand Canyon? So there's a lot of interesting things you can learn from the data just by having these data structures um, that represent this analysis of your past data. So I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, what this means. Um, but first of all, the assumptions I made might not hold for everyone. Um, I assume that I have a regular schedule. Uh, that might not be true of everyone else. Um, and that I'm home more often than anywhere else. And also that I'm home more often on weekday evenings and weekends. So of course, it doesn't work if you have an irregular schedule or you travel a lot, because it's really hard to determine what home is for you. But it's also hard if you don't have enough points. And also, if you have bad technology, um, sometimes the signals are really, really bad. So um, you're not actually at a location that it says you are. Um, and this could depend on you know, the cell signal or just even the hardware you have that's getting the signal. An example of bad technology is that, um, oh, you can't see this. So this is a picture of where I was at a certain time in Williamsburg. And there's actually a coast and water. So it says that I was walking on water um, on the lower left-hand side. And so obviously, that's, that's wrong, because if I was walking on water, I'd probably feel different. But anyway. <laughs> um, so yeah, so 
there's cautions too. Um, this analysis is a general pattern of behavior, so it's not specific, or it shouldn't be looked at as very specific. Um, the locations, again, may be inaccurate, and if you've got locations turned on, Google itself does ask for corrections sometimes, so it knows that there are bugs that um, it needs help with. And another thing you should also not do is don't let Google ruin your life. <laughs> so if you look around at the forums where people talk about Google Maps, there's a lot of people that blame Google Maps on the breakdown of their relationship. <laughs> And this is, <laughs> and so this is because, I guess Google showed them not being home at a certain time of the day, and you know they they were maybe they were walking on water. I don't know. <laughs> so, so yes, don't let Google ruin your life. And I also want, <laughs> I also want you to think about. Would you share this information? And this is the same slide as before of what I was able to figure out about yourself. Um, so would you share this information? Um, the people that could have this information are products um, and apps, you know, products like your smartphone, your smartwatch, whatever, and apps that you install on your phone. Also, companies that access that data could have this information, and companies that buy and share data could have this information. If you think about it, the implications are benign if somebody just uses this information for marketing purposes. You know, Google sees that I ran 22 miles this month and added up over time. Maybe it's time for me to buy sh new shoes and they want to give me a $20 off at a retailer that's partnered with them. Sure, okay, that's maybe okay. So it might be more worrisome if your insurance company decides to deny a claim because they know you were speeding right before the accident or something like that. So yeah, that's a little bit, yeah. Um, there were two articles in the Washington Post just this week about companies that want to get more of your information. So the first article is about a car company um, that, or basically all car companies are building in more data collection capabilities into their cars. So here it says, an automaker can vacuum up a massive amount of personal information about someone, where he shops, the weather on his street, how often he wears his seatbelt, what he was doing moments before a wreck, even where he likes to eat and how much he weighs. It's kind of a lot of information. The second article was about how companies um, like Stitch Fix, you know, the clothing companies that are online and send you clothes based on your preferences. Um, they're also gathering up information about our body measurements. So here it says, clothing companies now see body measurements as one of their most prized currencies. Millions of Americans are increasingly offering up their innermost personal data in search of customized pieces or a better fit. These body measurements look a lot like medical records. So privacy experts worry that the retailers eventually will be tempted to sell the data or the information could become the target of hackers. Passwords can be changed, body sizes can't. Um, so if you think about all these companies with all this information, what if they share all that data? Then they pretty much have a model of your entire life. That might be something you might freak out over. So. Bottom line, it's your data, your choice. Um, if privacy is something that matters to you, I think you should take a look at what potentially they could be doing with your data w when you decide to give it. But you know, if the benefits outweigh your privacy concerns, that's great, but at least you did your due diligence. All right, so my code is here. Um, I have a blog here, which doesn't really have that many posts in it. And you can email me at this email address. And I am open for questions if you have any. Sure. I do, but I'm thinking about it some more. The question was, do I still share my data? <laughs> Oh, this was, I look at Google, but why do I use Hotmail? Well, because that username was taken. <laughs> yes? Uh, 
<laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, so the question was, when my assumptions break down, are there other algorithms I can use besides k-means? Um, actually, k-means is actually pretty good when, in this case. So what my assumptions break down more in, um, in terms of my habits and things like that. Um, I think k-means is pretty good, except um, if you want to change like the size of your cluster or the minimum or maximum radius, then you can kind of play around with that to get better results. But in, in terms of an algorithm, it's pretty good. Any more questions? Oh, yes. Oh, how many data points did I use? Um, I don't know the number exactly, but it was about a year and a half worth of data. And oh, did I get rid of? Um, I actually. It was probably like maximum, you know, five to ten data points per day. So it actually wasn't that much because if it's collecting maybe uh, every 15 seconds, it's really kind of a drop in the hat. Yes. The question is, what did this do to my battery life? You mean turning on location sharing? Yeah. It's actually not bad. Um, it actually didn't change too much. Um, I think because you usually keep your GPS on, right? So, well, some people do. <laughs> so, um, and I actually did notice that before I decided to let it collect my GPS information, it would still collect information when I mapped a place, like when I was trying to get somewhere and use navigation. So that's something to be careful about. Yes. The question is, how interested is Google in be uh, how how transparent is Google interested in being about using this information? They're they're actually quite transparent. So they will um, talk about you know this is very voluntary, and even if you want to delete part. Oh, I'm sorry. What was the question? Uh, I don't necessarily mean for individuals that are living in the data, as you've done, but looking at what they're being able to do with this data collected from thousands of millions of people. Ah, so how? So how transparent is Google in what they're going to do your, with your data um, in an aggregate form? I think that's kind of a more of a gray area because a lot of companies reserve the right to aggregate your data and do whatever they need to do with it. And I think that's probably Google's stance on it as well. Yes. Uh, how accurate was my uh, was my uh, distinguishing of the locations? Like, was was it within a meter and that sort of thing? Um, it was pretty accurate, actually. I think it really depends on how large the location is. You know, if it's a very large venue, then it would be more accurate. Um, what I tried to do was um, so first. Sometimes it would take it would cluster the same location, maybe like feet apart as two different locations. So I did a secondary cleaning step to try to combine those locations that were close to each other, just because I figured, you know, if something's within feet of each other, it's probably not very significant that they're two different points. So um, there were things like that, but I was pleasantly surprised with how well the, the algorithm did. Uh, were, was there, were there any surprises that I learned about myself from this? Um, I guess I'm, I'm a very regular person, <laughs> which is kind of boring. Um, but you know, you do notice some things like, um, I didn't know I went to that restaurant that many times last year. Um, maybe I should be spending my money elsewhere. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's interesting to look at your data sort of like in a black and white form. So I think it was just surprising that I could get the details of everything just like on a piece of paper. Um, I don't have anything off the top of my head that was that surprising, but um, yeah. <laughs>
Oh, yes. Um, the question was, d did the data that I download, downloaded? Oh, so w was the information that was available to download include anything like wireless or SSIDs? No, not at all. I think that might have been more interesting, so I could have figured out you know, how accurate the location would have been. Yes? So for, for location data, was it always using the Wi-Fi? I'm sorry, like your LTE, your server server, that's something sort, or was it also grabbing wireless networks for location data? Was it I was able to tell where the location data was coming from, whether it was wireless or um, anything else. Uh, I was not able to tell, but um, I know the cell phone coverage around my house isn't great because um, we have a lot of trees. So I think that probably affected the location of my home because it probably used wireless access points instead of GPS. And so um, I did notice that in places where service was spotty. I didn't really have great data. So, but I, I couldn't tell, but it was more like that I knew. Oh, yes. Did I notice a difference after Google got in trouble for collecting data? Um, I actually don't know when that happened. When did that happen? Oh. <laughs> so, so I started turning on location sharing about a year and a half ago. So unless something happened in that period of time, I probably wouldn't know. Any more questions? Yes. Was I able to download other users' location data? Um, no, uh, Google does protect your data from other people. Um, I was able to ask people for their data so I could test my algorithms, but that was on a voluntary basis. <laughs> All right, well, if there are no more questions, then thank you very much for coming.